Hi, we're back. Welcome to our channel. I'm going to continue with some Q&As. Um, I'm a little backed up, but um, if you do leave a comment, uh, you won't see my answers on the comments. They'll be in our next video. Okay, so uh, P.B. Molina um, asked if we have an experience with CLEP exams and do we recommend them? Um, I recommend all good things to if it's something you like to do, if you don't mind taking exams, sure, it's a good way to earn college credit quickly. And I just stress out from exams. I actually project my stress onto my kids, <laughs> which is sad, but I just don't like exams. So I would rather take the course. That is totally me. Um, lots of people do CLEP, obviously. And if you wanna spend the time studying for those, I don't know how much they cost. I don't know if you can take them over and over and if it hurts you, that would definitely be something that would take the stress off for me if we chose to do those, is how many times can you take them? Um, Allie Grace uh, asked about um, her book that she's going through with her five and a half year old. She's reading uh, How to Learn to Read in 100 Easy Lessons, which is what we use with our kids. And after that, I think I've mentioned this before, in the back of the book, there's a reading list that they say, the authors say, um, is second grade reading level. So you can just go to the library after that. And what we included when our young ones are learning from that book is writing dictation. So the little passages that they learn to read, like um, uh, the cat is mad, we would have them copyright that over and over and that would work on their penmanship. They learn spelling that way. And then we progress to teaching them the punctuation and that's how we handle language arts. So, and we skip through that book. We, um, I would go back every day and uh, have them read it again to the point where they, maybe they even memorized it. My kids joke that they weren't really learning. They were just memorizing, but in the end they did learn uh, the jokes on them, they just didn't realize it. So we would go back to the beginning um, until it got too boring for them. And I never really read the teacher's prompts. Um, if you wanna be a better teacher than I am, read the teacher's prompts and suggestions. I was always trying to do a quick lesson and move on. And that was just my teaching style. But it's a great book you can find on Amazon. And uh, another user, I can't even pronounce the name. Um, they want to they want to know more about the uh, dual enrollment requirements. And I'll stop there and say it's going to depend on the university that is offering dual enrollment. Um, this person is asking how old were my kids when they started taking them? Uh, it varied. They got younger and younger. Uh, Katrina and Heath, I think, broke the record and took English 101 at 10 and a half or so. And that just shows that any kid can do it. That doesn't mean you just need to feel pressured or bad if your child isn't doing that. Um, it's just possible. And that's what we've shown. Again, our kids are not geniuses. They just study hard and we support them as best we can. So the average was 11 or 12. And we say college by 12 to include the ones that did it at age 12. But the um, younger half of set of kids did do it at a younger age. Other question this person has is what can you do to prepare um, for them to take college class classes that could be used added to the transcript? Well, we take um, anything that you take at the college level should definitely be added to the homeschool transcript, if that's the transcript they're referring to, the homeschool transcript. So if you wanna uh, make up a homeschool transcript, a high school homeschool transcript, you just start to fill in the blanks with whatever classes the student is taking dual enrolled. Um, how do you prepare them? Well, obviously teach them to read and write and basic math, and then they can figure the rest out by going all the way through algebra, as a homeschooler, they will be able to take like college algebra or maybe the prerequisite to that. And as I've mentioned in my videos, many of our kids took prerequisite classes 
to the required college classes, even a prerequisite English class. One of my kids took that too. There's no shame in that. It's very valid. It still helps them to be prepared. So at home, you just prepare them with the basics, you know, writing a three paragraph essay, eventually uh, building up to a five paragraph essay, which will prepare them for um, English 101, teaching them how to do research and um, knowing what um, journals and websites are, are legitimate to put on a research paper, teaching them how to do a reference page or a works cited. And now we use um, citationmachine.net. That's the latest one I know about. My kids are always um, teaching me new things with the latest and greatest website. So apparently now uh, there are websites out there do the references for you. But the main thing is formatting with Microsoft uh, how to write an essay or research paper. And if they can do that at home, they're gonna be able to do it at the college level. And definitely whatever they're taking in college, add to their homeschool transcript, makes it look better, more legitimate. Um, it'll be um, viewed at, viewed upon more favorably because you have those people who look at a homeschool transcript and think this isn't worth what the paper that it's written on. So if you can put dual enrollment credit on there, it just makes it more valid for those people that are more scrutinizing. Um, that's not me saying that about the worth of the high school transcript. That's just what some people think about it. Um, another person asked if there's an age requirement to be dual enrolled and what to do in that case. Again, uh, each university is or junior college is going to have their own requirements. We uh, mentioned in our book that when it's one university said you had to be 15 or a junior in high school or second semester sophomore, whatever it is that they say, um, those are easy requirements to meet because you just need to homeschool your child to be at that level to where you decide my child is doing um, sophomore level work or junior level work. And that is for the parents to decide based on the material that you're having them study at home. So you could just arbitrarily say, my student is now a 10th grader or 11th grader because of the work that they're doing. And my comment on that is the proof is in the pudding. If they're doing the work, then that is the grade level that they're in. And some universities are gonna say, oh, they have to be 16. Well, if there's an or in there, like 16 or a junior, then that's the loophole. And I say loophole in a good and positive way. I don't say loophole as in you're trying to get away with something. Again, we're not trying to scam the system. We are trying to accelerate through the system as fast as we can to meet our children's goals. And we do that best through them starting college early. So if it's really complicated, that's where you can give me a call and set up a consultation, and then I can specifically go to that university website and help you navigate. I imagine that there are uh, colleges out there that are so strict that they are going to just do all they can to keep young kids from taking their classes. I would just say take your money elsewhere, and there's plenty of choices out there. You don't need to go to the one that's in your town, your city, not even your state. You can do things through um, Faulkner University here in Alabama, University of Alabama, um, or you can just graduate your student early and go to um, Bellevue University online. So there are a lot of choices, or you can, like the other person recommended, prepare them for classes, earn college credit that way, what, whatever suits you and your family and your student. Um, Another question is how do colleges accept children so young with the ACT or SAT score? Well, now since things changed a lot in 2020, I don't know if you're seeing this in your CD, but I am seeing billboards everywhere that say, you know, um, apply to our college, ACT waived. So are they gonna go back? I don't know, I'm not sure, but right now, you probably can find a place to earn college credit without an ACT or SAT score. Uh, if you can't, or you don't want to do that, for us, ACT or SAT was a great way to 
graduate our kids because it was kind of once they get a certain uh, grade or score on those exams that was proof to us that they have exceeded high school level and that they're ready to move on to college so the answer in short is you may not even need it and if you do uh, and you go to an ACT registration there really is no um, a limit to how young a student could take it. I haven't seen it unless they've changed the requirements since I'm posting this video. Uh, you will need an, an ID and of course I've mentioned our kids have military IDs but the ones that didn't at different times we were just able to go to the DMV and with their birth certificate and social security card get them state IDs so there are ways to get ID cards to take the ACT, which will be required, but I have not seen any actual age limits. And if you're just worried about, um, are they ready? That's a completely different subject. It, to find out if they're ready, get the ACT, SAT review books from an you know, online source like Amazon. And, uh, and I think you can shop through our link. I don't know, I'll ask my daughter how that works. But um, if you get those books, you can start making that part of their homeschool curriculum. Again, everything that we do at home is geared to the end goal. As my husband says, reverse engineer it, figure out where you want to be and work that now, even if they're five, six, seven. At some point, if you have a really advanced reader and they're young, let them do their language arts um, exercises out of an ACT or SAT review book help them become so familiar with those types of questions, the format, um, being able, we call it uh, multiple guess, um, whatever they need to do, become so comfortable and taking, um, having them take the practice tests at home, scoring them at home, and then when you see they can achieve the desired score, and I say desired score for, because for us, it was always a very minimum uh, expectation because of their age. And again, we've been criticized for that, shooting for the minimum. But again, we're talking about, you know, a nine or 10 year old studying for that. And so we're happy if they got a 17 or 18 because um, they could even achieve um, conditional acceptance to a college with a 17. And if you want to get full merit scholarships, you know, then we're talking about maybe a 30 or 35 for some universities and, you know, that's great if you want to do that. It's going to take you a little while longer and your child will be older when they go to college. If, if you need to have that full ride scholarship, um, that's entirely up to you and your family. Um, so I think I'm getting the signal that we've talked, I've talked long enough and I absolutely enjoy answering your questions. It gives me um, great pleasure to feel like I'm helping and please reach out to us at collegeby12 at gmail.com if you want to set up a session and we can talk individually about your children and their needs. Thank you so much. Please um, like and subscribe and uh, post it on your social media, our channel, and uh, just um, appreciate your positive comments and questions. Thank you.